Hey everybody, it's John with Freshwater Systems. Today we're going to talk to you about demand delivery pumps. What they are, how they're used, and what to look for when you're trying to find the right size for your needs. This category of pumps is referred to as demand slash delivery. And literally it's the same pump, but it's turned on and off differently. A demand pump is speaking to a pump that kicks on when water is demanded. So an example would be, it's hooked up in my RV and the pump is energized, it's powered, but it's not running. And I go over to the faucet and I turn on the faucet, which creates the demand. Pressure drops in the system and the pump senses that pressure drop and it turns on. A demand pump can also be a delivery pump if you're activating it with a switch versus allowing the pressure switch that's built in to operate the pump. A delivery pump, it's the same pump without the pressure switch. It's activated by simply turning a switch on and off. So that's the simple difference between demand and delivery. It's virtually the same pump. Demand delivery pumps are used to move water someplace. And, and the most usual application would be like in a, in a boat or an RV where we're pulling water from a storage tank and we're moving it to a faucet in the galley or the shower uh, or even to, to flush a toilet. The, the need to move that water. A booster pump, which we also sell a lot of, is really doing a different thing. The booster pump is adding water pressure and flow rather than just moving water and that's that moving water is what a demand and delivery pump is up to. Most of these pumps are going to work on a demand mode meaning that we're going to utilize the pressure switch that's built into the top of the pump and as it's moving water when demand stops the pump will keep running for a minute or two until we reach the pressure switch setting in the system. So if, if this particular pump, let's say, has a 65 PSI pressure switch, as we pump water towards the sink and the sink faucet gets turned off, the pump will run until the pressure in that line meets the shutoff setting on the pressure switch, and then the motor shuts off. When the faucet is opened again, that pressure will drop because now we're moving water out of the faucet, the pump will kick back on. These pressure switches typically have about a 10 to 15 PSI drop before they make the, the motor kick back on. So for example, a 65 PSI shutoff switch probably won't turn back on until it reaches 50 or 45. These are diaphragm pumps. And what that means is unlike a rotary vane pump where we have an impeller that's spinning in a chamber and moving water, this diaphragm in the head of these pumps works on an oscillation process. So we have two rubber diaphragms that have cups in them and as one rotates it oscillates and it's basically squeezing those cups together and pulling them apart. And that's what creates the draw and the push in the pump. They're typically also self-priming and they'll run dry for a period of time but it's not recommended that if it does run dry that you just let it keep running because then it'll get warm and if the pump gets too hot that could damage the motor. So these types of pumps are used in several ways. Um, probably the most common that we're aware of is in, in the RV and marine applications where we're taking water out of a storage tank and moving it to a faucet. But they're used in many, many places. Um, hydroponics is, is a big example where we're moving water through a tank, maybe even on a recirculation process, a demand delivery pump is typically used because we're not moving big volumes of water, we're using relatively small volumes of water. In that regard, these pumps typically generate anywhere from a half up to about five or six gallons uh, per minute. And I want to address the pump output rating. This is very important. 
When you're looking at a label and description of these demand delivery pumps, you'll see a gallon per minute rating. You'll also see a pressure. The gallon per minute rating is describing how much water the pump will output at open discharge. That's not hooked up to anything, no elbows, no tubing, and no pressure. It is strictly blowing water out of the pump. That's how much the pump produces, and that's the number that appears on the pump. Once you hook it up to something and you want it to run at a pressure, you need to consult with the pump curve because the higher the pressure you need, the less water you're going to get out of the pump. And the reason is you've started to restrict the flow, and if you're trying to create pressure as well as flow, that's also going to reduce that output of gallons per minute. And the best analogy I can use is a garden hose. So if you have a garden hose and you're just turning it on, you're going to see an open flow rate. That water's coming out of that garden hose at a given GPM or gallons per minute. Now if I put my thumb over the end of that garden hose, it's going to start creating a spray at higher pressure. And the more that I close off that into that garden hose with my thumb, the, the farther that spray is going to go, which means I've got a higher pressure, but I'm significantly less in gallons per minute. Now the pressure or pump curve shows the relationship between the gallons per minute and the amount of pressure that you'll get at that flow rate. The important thing to look for is do you know how much water you need to move at what pressure? And then with that knowledge, you can look at these pump curves to kind of find what your sweet spot is. And gallons per minute is kind of something that a lot of people misjudge. Um, so the best way to figure out how much you need is if you have a certain demand, you can do a bucket test and time how much water you get in a certain amount of time and then extrapolate out how much that is in gallons per minute. Um, if you're confused by that, give us a call and we'll certainly help you figure that out. The other number that's on this pump is a pressure and that is typically going to tell you the setting for the pressure switch. This particular pump says 60 psi switch setting which means when this breaches 60 psi internally it turns the motor off. These pumps are rated for water. If you're going to use any kind of liquid that is combined with a chemical, uh, you want to make sure that the chemical is compatible with santaprene because the, the diaphragm on all these pumps is santaprene. So if you have a chlorine rich product, if you have any other kind of chemical that you're using in your water delivery, you want to check to make sure that santaprene is compatible with that. There are different rubbers available, but that's a special order process and uh, just give us a call and see if we might be able to accommodate your need. Maintenance on these types of pumps is, is pretty minimal. Every once in a while you might want to sanitize it. Um, and that is, there's some instructions for that. You're literally going to drop a intake hose into a bucket with a sanitizing solution and just draw it through the head of the pump. Good to do, especially if you're drawing water through the pump that's not a city supply or municipally treated uh, water that's kind of safe. If you're, if you're running water uh, from a hydroponics, something that's untreated water, that would mean that you'd probably want to step that sanitization process up periodically a lot more frequently. Other than that, they're pretty maintenance free. If you're going to winterize the pump, if you're going to take it out of service um, seasonally, just make sure that you drain the pump and get all the water out of it and that'll be fine. These pumps are really made to operate on their own without an accumulator tank, but some applications might be handy to have the little extra water to help the pump keep up. 
And obviously, the reduction of on-off cycles is going to benefit the longevity of the pump. As a side note, we also sell a booster pump that uses very similar motors, very similar heads. Uh, doesn't have the pressure switch on top like a demand delivery pump. A lot of times the power connector is a uh, quick connect outlet for hooking up to a transformer. This would not run on uh, 110, for example. It requires a 12 volt transformer. And this would also have an externally mounted pressure switch to sit in front of a tank. Most usual use for this would be like for an RO system as a pressure boost. Well, that's all I got on demand delivery pumps for today. Be sure and like this video, subscribe to our channel, and check out our website at freshwatersystems.com.